Well, hello and welcome back to episode number two of Get a Grip with Coach Elix. Can I get a standing yay. ovation? Hello. Yay, yay, yay. Uh, I'm super excited to be here. I hope you're excited to be here uh, with me. I have two very handsome gentlemen and um, tell them who you are. Again. I want to I know who you are first. Oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> well, I am Coach Elix, and um, I am the host of Get a Grip with Coach Elix. I am a coach. You know, last time, a lot of people asked me, are you a life coach? Are you an executive coach? And here's the answer. I'm a coach who works with individuals who are committed to extraordinary living. So... If that means that you want the best uh, career or the best business, I might be somebody who is for you. If that also means that you just want to live the life that you've always dreamed of, then I'm also the one for you. But I'm here um, to tell you a little bit about, you know, give you some tips, some tools that can help you uh, get a grip and get in action. That's really what this is all about. By the way, grip, if you're wondering where does that come from, GRIPS is, stands for, the acronym stands for greatness requires intention and purpose. So if you ever forget, you know, or you tell yourself, get a grip, reframe it in that way because it's a positive way to reframing getting a grip you know it's not about getting your act together it's about really being great and being reminded that if you are committed to being great it actually requires intention and it requires purpose and grips uh, it's a four-step methodology i've been doing this for over 20 years um and it's very simple it's about Um, getting clear as to what your vision is, what your goals are, what your aspirations are, then taking a look at your roadblocks, the things that get in the way. We all get, you know, most of us have aspirations, we have goals, but we also have things that get in the way. So it's important that you identify what they are so that you can then take committed action to, you know, removing those roadblocks. Then it's about foundational integrity. This is not a conversation about morality of any kind. This is a conversation about foundation. So when you're creating, when you are committed to something, a goal of any kind, it's like building a structure of sorts. And if you are building a structure, the most important part of that structure is what? It's foundation. It's foundation. Very good. Um, So in life, you got to pay attention to your integrity, your uh, foundational integrity. And, you know, we'll, you know, throughout the shows, we'll talk about what that means. And then ultimately, it's about planning the work and working the plan. I always tell people, if you have a goal and you don't have a plan, you don't have a goal. You just have an illusion. You have something that maybe someday, some time, but not now. And uh, you're likely not going to get the results that you want. So, that did I do a good job? You did an excellent job. I just want people to know that uh, your co-host is Stephen, and we also have Mark here producing your show That's as your right. support. We're here too. It's just not these voices, you know, <laughs> in the studio bouncing back and forth. Yeah. But and Stephen has also hosted uh, his own radio show at W A R A, and I just follow his, you know, his uh, footprints. Uh, yeah, and, no, 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 well, no. Sort of. He's, his show is Stephen uh, the ev- Medium. Everything happens in sync and That's everything true. happens the way it's supposed to happen. And this last show, the first show, was amazing. I mean, Mark and I got to to sit in it and listen to you and then hearing comments. And the, the, the great thing why I'm so happy I'm part of this is because this is so necessary. It's necessary even without COVID, but with COVID, it just brings us, you know, it's, it's all about the present and, you know, it just brings us to a, a place that people need t- t- these tools. People need this con- needs or need this conversation, right? That's right. And uh, by the way, um, 
I did a poll on my Instagram. So if you're not connected with me on Instagram, you better find me, Coach Elex, on Instagram. Actually, Coach Elex at anything, uh, and you'll find me. But I did a poll about asking people if they're feeling stressed, if they're feeling anxious, if they're having fear-based conversations based on our current reality. Guess what? You know what? You want to know what the percentage of the people uh, that responded feel? Stressed and anxiety? What? A hundred percent. Wow. There was not one person who didn't feel some wow. level of stress and anxiety. Which brings me to my topic. If if you've seen my video that I posted um, early last week, I talked about, I had that, this you know, aha moment. And I tell people all the time, you know, being a coach doesn't mean my life is better than. It just, it doesn't mean any of that. I have, you know, I deal with the same breakdowns, the same roadblocks that most people have in their lives. I just been spending over 20 years in practicing and mastering the skills to be better at overcoming, at reminding myself that in the face of the circumstances, I can be better than. Uh, but life still happens, and I still deal with breakdowns. I still deal with anxiety. I still deal with, you know, upsetting situations. Um, so my life is no different than yours as it relates to that. And I posted uh, a video about having this aha moment where, you know, I was feeling really stressed. You know, both Stephen and I are doing a whole lot. We got a lot going on in our lives. And we both, you know, are feeling, you know, like we, we're, 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 at, we're maxed out. Um, you know, when, when we talk, when, when people use the expression, you know, your plate is full, our plate is over the top. So it's time for us to get a new plate. That's really, you know, what this is, uh, it all boils down to. But... You know, I, I was having a conversation with Stephen about feeling so, you know, anxious. And, and Stephen, you know, said to me, again, this is in the spirit of we are very connected. We work together. We are supportive. We're very supportive of each other's dreams. And he says, maybe we need to reevaluate. Maybe we need to, you know, do things slightly different so that we're a bit more comfortable. And as soon as he said that, it was like the light bulb went on on my, on my head. And I was like, okay, that's a really good reminder that I do not want to be comfortable. I want to I wanna keep practicing and get better mastery at the art of getting comfortable with the discomfort. Because if, it's, if it doesn't challenge you and i've said this many times before it, it's not going to change you and the moment i i had that realization i i thought wait a minute there is there's a reason you know why we're here there's a reason for what you know it's happening and um and how can i the circumstances are what they are you know and and i can go into specifics and i will in a, in a couple of minutes who am I going to be in the face of the circumstances? You know, and by the way, this was not about, you know, Stephen, you have to do any of this. I had to look at myself first and foremost, and I had to find a way to reframe that conversation that I was having with myself uh, because the, the conversation, the narrative, and I want to talk about narr narratives, uh, was certainly a narrative that was designed to take my power away. So I was walking a, walking around with absolutely no power and feeling bad and feeling sorry, and that just, it's not workable. It's not workable for me. Now, having said that, I want to make sure I remind you guys listening, if, if anything I say doesn't ring true for you, that's okay. You know, uh, you don't have to feel the same experiences. We don't have to agree. This is just one way, one possible way to transform your life. 
there's many other ways. So I just want to make sure that you're not listening through anything and I say as the way because it's not the way. There's many, many ways. It just happens to be one pretty damn effective way because I've been working on this for over 20 years. How come you never say that to me? What do you mean? It doesn't have to be my way. It doesn't have to be the same way. You don't give me that at all. You just give me. What do I give you? This is it. Yeah. See? Well, I'm, See? by the way, again, those of you, <laughs> many of you know Stephen, and, uh, you know, he's a Gemini. So, you know, there's a certain level of skill that's required to. Wow. Well, the, man, wait till all the Geminis are um, hearing this. Start calling. Yes. Start calling. Exactly. But, but, the, but the truth is, we, we, you know, we have a life. We've been together 27 years, going into 28 years. Yes. Uh, so, you know, whatever we do actually works. And we're, you know, we are really living. I mean, the, the theme of my, uh, the song that I play, uh, it's, it's really a perfect testament of our life. You know, we are living the, li- the best we're having the best time of our life. Mm -hmm. We are living a life that we love. That does not mean that we're not dealing with breakdown. It does not mean that life is perfect. It isn't. Believe you me, we have plenty of breakdowns. And by the way, I I also want to acknowledge uh, when you call, I listen to you. And sometimes I think about our conversations after, just like with my clients. You know, I, I always, I'm always listening to my clients. So um, Karen from Rhode Island, uh, she was incredibly brave in calling last week. And, and she really was influential in, in, you know, in me thinking about how our current state is impacting everyone. Um, so, you know, I'm hoping that Karen will call so that we can have a follow-up. I'm hoping that our conversation made a difference and maybe we can even have a little bit more um, talk about where, where she's at and how we can keep pushing her to a better place. Well, you know what? You know what's amazing is that because of your first show and what the content is and what you're sharing, Karen called. Now, I've known Karen uh, since the 80s, we've been really, really good friends, and I love her. And But one of the things that sort of I, I, you opened my eyes to is that I, I've never in all those years told Karen, you know, how I feel about her, what I think about her, and like she's this incredibly strong woman. I mean, you don't get stronger than this, and I know it comes from her mom because we know the family, but it's just it's pretty amazing that just this show the first show had Karen call and started make it just had a different perspective of the subject matter and where she is and 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 my feelings towards her so this just opens up such amazing positivity like what you're doing Elix it really does well thank you thank you and I think we're going to take a break and when we come back I do believe there are calls holding so we're going to check in with those of you holding and if you want to call and you want to check in you want to say hi you want to talk about something that it's in your mind or something that you are um you know uh, you just stuck or you need support 508-222-1320 
Well, welcome back. I time just flew by. It does. Uh, and uh, I was actually coaching Mr. Mark, our producer, uh, on a really important conversation. We're gonna get back to that because uh, I'm pretty sure other listeners may uh, connect with you know where you're at. So let's take um, let's take a call. They've been pa- waiting patiently. Let's see. Hello, this is Coach Alex. Hello, Karen. <laughs> it's who? <laughs> Karen. Karen. It's this Karen from Rhode Island? Yes, it is. I swear to God, Stephen looks, he's like he recognizes you. I don't know. I, I'm telling you, when you're wearing these headphones, people sound very differently. And I actually, we had a Carmen last time. So I thought, Carmen? And it's Karen from Rhode Island. And we've been talking about you, Karen from Rhode Island. How are you doing? I'm doing better. Uh, thanks to you, you helped me out a lot last week, which I knew the answer anyway, but sometimes you just need to hear it because you get into your own little world and you just need to understand that you're not the only one and everybody's going through it and you're so fortunate, but you still get trapped into that thought process, which I got to get out of. Yes. So what, what, let me, let me ask you this, Karen, what, what did you get? What did you hear in our conversation that was most impactful? To you and and again, uh, remind everyone for those of uh, the listeners who are listening for the first time. Uh, wh- how, why did you call? Why did you call me? Because I am always on the go. I am constantly working. I, I'm a workhorse, and all of a sudden, with COVID, of course, I didn't work for eleven weeks. But that was that was normal. Nobody did. Most people didn't anyway. And then I, my, one job opened up, and I'm working there, but my, my other job didn't. And I am working two to three days a week, where I'm normally working five days a week and, um, and five plus days a week. And I went from that to, like, what, two days a week sometimes? Like, I feel like, I just felt, like, useless. Mm. And I don't, you know, when you're so used to working like that, and all of a sudden, boom, I'm just sitting home. I take care of my mom, and then when I'm done with her and the house is clean and the grocery shop is done, I sit there, and I, I go, okay, what next? Mm. And I'm becoming, um, believe it or not, I mean, and you made me feel so much better, because you know what? I'm not the only one, you know? So go out and do something else, and I have been. But also, I feel like I'm being trapped. I'm becoming antisocial, me, little Miss Social Butterfly, right? Jay will say, my boyfriend will say, let's, Want to go out grab a drink? Nah, I feel like staying home. You want to go grab something to eat? Nah, I feel like staying home. That is not me. So I'm I'm not recognizing who I am at times, not all the time, because that is not me. Mm. Antisocial. That is not me. I am the biggest social butterfly, as you know. And what what are you doing now? What have you done to reframe that conversation so that you are no longer feel feel uh, feeding? the feeling useless or feeling trapped? What are you, how are you reframing that conversation for yourself right now? Well, I'm, I'm trying to keep myself even more busy. I mean, I don't know what more I can do. Everything is done, but I've been like actually cooking more and giving it to my mom, just keeping myself busy, doing things to make other people happy. You know, I'm just, like my sister, she's um, going to retire soon and she can't cook to save her life, so I'm getting recipes together for her. So when she retires, she can cook. She can't even make toast. I know people like that. And, and you certainly can cook. That's that's for sure. So here's you know here's what I what I'm hearing, and um, you know if you're listening and you find yourself really connected with Karen's story, and by the way, just like I did my poll, likely you are. Most people are feeling very connected to your story, including myself. You know what I did. Um, is I took a little time to separate, to like really make a list of all the things that I know are concerns that are black and white. So for example, you used to work five days a week and now you're working two and a half to three days a week. That's a fact, right? There's nothing, there's no story around that. That is factual. You know, you're at home more frequently in, uh, that's also a fact. There's no story around that, that, you know, that there's no narrative that's, that's made up around that. But one of the things that it's important to, to pay attention to is 
when we feel that sense of anxiety, when we feel that what I call hijack, our brain goes into that state of fight, flee, protect, defend, right? It's yep. often nothing to do with the, the factual circumstances. It often has to do with that narrative that we are giving power to. That narrative. So, for example, feeling useless is actually a narrative. Is a narrative that's designed to take your power away. And if you're taking your power away, you are not going to feel great. You know, somebody, it's, it could be argued that somebody who's powerless is a victim, right? And, exactly. you know, nobody wants to live life in, in that state because it's, there's no power there. So a good exercise is always to tune in and ask yourself, what's, what's that story? What's that narrative? Or what's the oh my God? Because oftentimes we go into an oh my God, I am going to not have a home. Oh my God, I am going to, you know, sometimes some of us, by the way, I'm from Puerto Rico, super dramatic. I live, I live my life as a telenovela. Uh, you know, my oh my gods can be incredibly dramatic. I'll be homeless. And the truth is, that's a narrative that is designed to take my power away. That is not factual. Now, having said that, I also want to recognize that we are living in a really different time. And there are scary moments for all of us. So that's not to say that we should dismiss, you know, our current reality. What I'm saying is that the circumstances are going to be whatever the circumstances are. That's, that's just how it is. Today, it happens to be sunny and beautiful. Tomorrow could be stormy. There is nothing. You could create a different story about that, but that's not going to change the circumstances. It is Absolutely. what it is. However, who are you going to be in the face of that is what you have control of is where you have the power to reframe, the power to change that conversation. And so I'm inviting you, Karen, going forward, that the moment you find yourself feeling upset, do this exercise. Ask yourself, what, is, what exactly is factual about my feeling upset? What are the factual circumstances that cannot be argued? And what is the conversation? What is the, oh my God, that is putting me in a hijack mode where my brain is going into a state of hijack, fight, flee, protect, defend. Does that make sense? 100%. 100%. And it's just crazy because I have such a wonderful life and I get myself into these ruts like everybody, you know, not just me. And I'm like, what the heck is wrong with you? You are the luckiest person alive. Why are you depressed today? Why are you anxious today? Why are you... Like, I want to, like, shake myself, and that is hijacking. Yeah. My, my brain is hijacking me, and it's, like, taking away from the quality of my life. And, and it's not, like I said, all the time. I'm not a depressed person at all. But there are times, especially during COVID, it's just, wow, I got to get myself out of that funk, you know? Yeah, so, listen, the power is always within you. Always, always, always. And I am super, you know... uh honor that you call my show and uh, I'm really honored to to know you and to continue to be able to continue to support you. So once again, Karen, thank you so much for calling. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. And we're going to take, no, we're not going to take a break. I don't know. I can't read sign language. Okay. So why don't we take another call? No? In two minutes? In two minutes? No. no? Okay. No. So I've been... I, we'll just fill it. First of all, he, the producer, who he actually has uh, pages that he shows Stephen for his show. For my show, he's giving me sign language as if I'm <laughs> supposed to learn sign language. I knew what it was. Yeah, well, I didn't. Keep just going, cle baby. Clearly, I didn't. But if you're on hold, just hold on tight because we'll get to just another call. Just be your intelligent self for about another two minutes. Yeah, well, we, that's fine. Uh, I can be intelligent and I can look pretty good at the same time. But anyways, Mark, let's, let's do this. 
What was the what is it that you share with us just before I took the call? What was what was your well, <laughs> revelation? Well, what I was saying, and I don't want it to sound like you know I want pity or that I feel sorry for my. You're talking to a coach, so <laughs> just say um, it like it is. There are times where I'm home. Um, I'm on disability, so. Uh, my mobility is a lot less than it used to be. Uh, Stephen and Elix know from knowing me, I had a partial amputation on a toe, mm -hmm. and it affects how I walk and my balance and everything. And I can't do all the things I did. When I was younger, I worked two, three, four jobs. I bowled seven nights a week. I mean, I had the life, you know. Today, I'm home, I watch television, and sometimes I sink into that, you know, am I doing something for people, and why am I here, or am I just, you know, taking and not giving? Luckily, I get reminded of things that, you know, like doing this show, doing Stephen's show, doing my show. And what uh, what is it, the one thing that you share with us about, you know, what's that conversation that you often have with yourself about the end? Well, it's like, um, I wonder because I don't work. Mm -hmm. I get disability. So, you know, I'm mostly, ta I look at it sometimes as I'm taking, you know, but am I giving? Mm -hmm. You know, is it a, you know, or am I just a taker that's just, you know, living off of everything else and everybody else? And that, for anyone who's listening, that is a narrative that is designed to take your power away. That is what I call, by the way, I, I'm going to share with you one of my the, the analogies and metaphors I use frequently about the game of baseball or any sport. But that's like playing a winless game. When you give power to such a narrative, because there, there's no truth to that. The only truth to that is the truth that you're feeding into it. So when you give power to that, you are literally playing a winless game. It's a game that is designed to lead you to nothing but more of the same. How's that working out for you? Yeah, yeah, it's really working out because when I turn it around and I think about, you know, wait a minute, you got a place to live, you've got food, you've got good friends, um, people, Stephen and Elix rely on you um, to get their show on the air and to keep things going like that. You know, you have a purpose, you have, you know, and when I think about that, then I'm like, gee. You know, it ain't as bad as it could be. <laughs> well, exactly. And a way to reframe that, it is, it's it's actually, I have a great life. You have a great life, by the way. You know, you're one of the most giving people I know. So when you talk about, am I giving enough? Stephen and I can answer that question. It, it is yes. So I know we're going to take a break. When we come back, if there's calls, we'll take some more callers. And we'll keep on this conversation.
And welcome back to Get a Grip with Coach Elix. I, I've been getting a quick um, instructions on radio sign language. What's <laughs> keep going and breaks so I don't screw it up again. So let's take another call. This is Coach Elix. Who's this? Hello? Hi, it's Dr. Johnson. How are you? Dr. Johnson, I am awesome. I am even better that I get to hear you. Well, I had to call in and let everybody in radio world know how amazing you are and how you truly achieve your goal of turning um, great individuals into exceptional human beings and exceptional um, you know, executives and how you really do you know, walk the talk. So I just wanted to call in and say hello. Oh, well, tell, tell everyone who you are a little bit so that people get to know Dr. Johnson. So, my name's Angel Johnson, and um, I am the Director of Women's Health at Greater Boston Neurology. I practice in Dedham, and I specialize in improving the quality of life for women. Um, certain conditions I treat are commonly, you know, discussed only in, you know, are commonly discussed only in closed rooms and, and people you know, live with pretty embarrassing things like, you know, urinary and bowel complaints and incontinence, and, and they don't realize that there's a doctor out there who, through pretty easy treatments, minimally invasive and other things, can really help them. And so that's what I spend the day doing. And uh, Dr. Johnson is one of the people I am most proud uh, of. Uh, I We've been working together for, I don't know, over two, two years at least, if not more. Almost three, since almost, 2017. Almost three, and uh, Dr. Johnson is uh, uh, a partner in this organization and a young partner in the organization who came in fully committed to to really transforming the paradigm and to making a difference in what you've done uh, in, in the short time that we've worked together, it's just inspiring. You are an inspiring human being, and, uh, you know, Greater Boston Urology is very, very lucky to have you, and I'm very lucky um, to have you in my life as well, and uh, I'm super proud. Thank you so much for your words uh, and, um, you know, and for doing the work because at the end of the day, you, you do the work. That's why you have the results that you have. Well, I absolutely agree with you that, you know, coaching doesn't work if you don't have the commitment there. Um, it also helps when I have you, Elix, to kind of kick me in the tail from time to time and keep me accountable. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dr. Johnson reminds me all the time uh, that I should have a little doll that says, what would Elix say or what would Elix do? I, I'm actually going to take that seriously. Maybe that's my next uh, business idea. I think it should be our next venture because... <laughs> Knowing, you know, I, I know and work with many of your coaching clients, and we all say that, um, you know, we have this little Elix voice in our head that when we get into that realm of comfort, when we start to accept mediocrity, when we just get tired and complaining, um, we, we have Elix in our minds. He reminds us of our mission statement, reminds us of our goals, and kind of forces us to take the next step forward. This is fabulous. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for calling, Dr. Johnson. I, I'm super excited. And Angel, it's Stephen. I just wanted to say hi. I know. I'm so glad you're there, too. I was watching your guys' episode from last week, last night. So I love yeah. it. I love I it. I love and, that you're there. And I love that I get to know you and everything that Elix just said for this incredible woman is, is I think, tenfold. She's, you really are just incredible, Angel. Oh, thank you both. And, and, All right, you guys and, have a and, great rest of the show. And yeah. before you go, I just want to say, I, I, Stephen, you should listen to Angel's, you know, advice. Maybe you should have a little doll of myself and remind you what would he like say? What would yeah, he like to know, do? I, what would Stephen do? Like a voodoo doll? <laughs> Stephen would throw the doll out the window. Angel. So uh, yeah, I don't know if that works in the household. <laughs> that might be a bit. Too See close. how smart she is. I thought I'd give it a try. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for calling. Bye, Angel. You take care. <laughs> By now. Okay, so you know, let's chat. Okay, I I can't. Let's chat, baby. I I th suggest that next time you bring your you like know, a TV studio. Uh, like you can have you can have guys coming in and just walk around like this, holding big signs up saying yeah. what what Elix needs it's, to do. I, I can't read lips, and <laughs> I can certainly not read your sign language. 
<laughs> Thank God I have Steven. Roll along. <laughs> okay. So roll no. <laughs> along. But one of the things Dr. Johnson talked about, I, you know, I, um, I love some quotes, you know, from famous people. Will Smith, who's known to be a really inspirational speaker, he actually has a quote that I, I live by. I love this quote because it's thought-provoking and it's challenging. And uh, Dr. Johnson reminded me of, you know, anytime you say to yourself, I'm, that's not realistic. How often do we find ourselves saying to ourselves, that's not realistic. You shouldn't dream that big. That's not realistic. Or when you share your dream and aspirations with someone else, they say, uh, you know, you may want to kind of reconsider that. That's not realistic. How often do you hear people telling you that so any time from here on the next time somebody says to you that's not realistic i want you to say to yourself this this is from will smith being realistic is the most commonly traveled road to mediocrity think about that being realistic is the most commonly traveled road to mediocrity so why would you be interested in anything that is realistic i'm not you know, he also, he, he talks about, he gives two examples in, in this um, interview. Talks about the invention of the plane. You know, years ago when, you know, the Wright brothers are among the people who are, you know, credited with the invention of the plane. Uh, years ago, they, people thought that that was not a realistic idea. And they thought they were told, you're crazy. But they believe in that idea so powerfully that they were unstoppable. And thank God that they were unstoppable because if not for that dream, we wouldn't have the luxury of traveling across the world in an airplane. That was non-existent then. You know, and by the way, if you see videos back, you know, in, in, in those days where, you know, they were testing airplanes, you 90% of the videos that you see are airplanes going up and crashing. So the point is, yeah, you know, things happen. It doesn't always go the way you want it to go. Breakdowns are part of life. It's not, life is not designed to be like um, golden. You know, breakdowns are necessary because they allow us, they give us that opportunity to, to learn. But what you want to appreciate, what you want to take on is that in the face of the breakdown, you keep moving. You keep, you, you keep committed to that dream. That's what happens. That's what it takes to make your dreams come true. You have to stay committed. Does that make sense, guys? It makes, it makes, you know what? It makes perfect sense. And I won't get into specifics, but in reference to what you just said, Elix, and in reference to your help, uh, freshman year of law school, mm -hmm. I had something that happened, and boy, w was that challenging. Was that a breakdown? Was that a barrier? And I was so close to just throwing my arms up and thinking, this is, this is just not going to happen. And I remember you and I had a lot of conversations and they were conversations that as soon as you started talking, I just shut you down. But then I did listen and it's incredible. When it's easy to look in hindsight, but it's incredible that when you have those breakdowns, sometimes you don't have a lot of time to figure it out. You, you know, in depending on what you decide, you're going to either take, you know, the path that's going to bring you to the place you want to go or not. Right. I mean, it's Absolutely. exactly what you said. And thankfully, I did kind of step back and figure it out and, and moved forward and became an attorney. So it's when you were saying that, I just thought, my God, for every, for in whatever your decision, whatever in your life, whatever's in your life, it's, it's, it's really so, what you just said is just so important and so key. And it goes back to, again, uh, if you're listening, I want you to think about those moments that we all have where we go, oh my God, what if? And I want you to really pay attention to what that narrative is, what that story is. Just really pay attention. You, some of you may be, may be, uh, may want to write it down. That's okay. And then notice 
how sometimes how absurd our narratives can be. You know, like we actually say things that are completely, un, you know, completely exaggerated. But the point that I'm making is that it's all made up. So the story that you design to take your power away, it's made up. There's no truth to it. Because if it was truth, it wouldn't be a narrative. It would be a factual, right? You know, a real actual concern. It is made up. So the point is, listen, if you're going to make up something, and by the way, human beings, we are, you know, meaning-making machines. We're making stories up all the time. So if you're going to make up something, you might as well make up something that's going to be empowering. Mm -hmm. It's made up anyways. So... <laughs> Think about that, and when we come back, we're going to talk about words create our reality, and I'll tell you a little story about baseball. Let's take a break. And welcome back to Get a Grip with Coach Elix. Uh, I hope you're getting as much value of this conversation as I am, and I know my co-host, uh, Stephen the Medium, and my producer, Mark, are getting a lot of value from the conversation, right? Absolutely. So I, I talked about, um, you know, we've been talking about the narrative, you know, those, you know, stories that we make that are designed to to take our power away and um, uh, and I'm inviting you know you to if you're having a, a moment where you're feeling upset or disempowered by whatever the situation is to take a moment to think about what what is that oh my god and uh, I am going to um, Lindsay I know you're listening uh, here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put in a um, a survey I'm a post on my social media asking people to share what's their oh my god so that because that's that's one of the the most important steps is to identify what's the oh my god so that those conversations otherwise those conversations are like you know those blind spots you know they're there but we don't know that they're there but they're impacting everything that we do everything that we say so you know identifying it puts it in the surface and you can then deal with it powerfully. So identifying what you're, oh my God, and then I talked a little bit about words create reality, right? So words, what you speak 
is what you get. If you get up in the morning and you are somebody who says, how many of you have gotten up in the morning and says, today's going to be a terrible day? Likely, it is going to be a terrible day because that's what you're declaring. That's the reality. Life mirrors back at us the kind of energy that we put out. So, in, and that includes our thoughts, our feeling. By the way, sometimes, you know, words start as thoughts and then we speak them. And then before we know it, those words get manifested in our lives. So this is an opportunity to learn how to reframe the kinds of words that are going to give you the kinds of results that are going to move you forward, that are going to have you uh, fulfill on those goals, on those dreams uh, that you have, whatever, whatever they are. You know, one thing, you know, when I talk about words create reality, I, um, uh, I was privileged to know Judith Glaser, uh, who was the, uh, the founder and creator of Conversational Intelligence. And, you know, I, she was a mentor to me. I did a lot of training with her. And that was one thing that she reminded me day in, day out. What we, what we speak is what create the kind of world that we live in. And if we give power to fear, then that creates a fear-based conversation that leads to fear-based results. If we give power to, you know, to a different voice, you know, where where our brain becomes uh, more trusting, then we give we begin to create a different kind of result uh, that is not fear-based. By the way, fear-based conversations, it's uh, it's a plan. It's like playing a win-less game. There is no chance in hell that you can win when you're giving power to a fear-based conversation. And that leads me to, I often, I share with a lot of my clients, a lot of the people that I, I'm in conversations with all the time, you know, people come to me because they have dreams that they want to, they want to attain and uh, they're stuck. Uh, sometimes they're entrepreneurial who have a dream or sometimes they're people who simply want a career change or it's some, it could be somebody just sitting at home who decided the time is now. And, um, and they're often, the question, they're often paralyzed by fear. You know, I want this, but what if, what, what will happen if I take that chance? And I, I bring it back to the game of baseball, right? So here's, here's some of the things that, some of the analogies that I use. So in the game of baseball, the first thing is, what's the one and only way that you can actually score in the game of baseball? Any of you know? It's hitting the ball. Very good. Oh, you're you're really good trained. I done a good job. Okay. That is the right answer. Hitting the ball. No, I often hear people say things like, "Well, you can cheer the team, you can create excitement, you can get the players, you know, really excited about the game, blah blah blah." No, no, that's that does not um that's does not create um a score in the game. You have to hit the ball. In order to hit the ball, you also have to get comfortable. You have to step into the field, right? You cannot hit the ball sitting in the sidelines, right? Many of you are playing a game where you want to score, but you're sitting in the sidelines. You're actually not in the field playing. So I want you to ask yourself, am I in the field? Am I... Or am I in the sideline? Am I on the bench waiting for something, the, the right moment, whatever that is? So not only do you have to step into the field, you also have to get comfortable at having a ball, if we're talking about baseball, right? Having a ball that's coming at you likely at 100 plus miles an hour. Now, that's not very comfortable, especially if you're new to the game, right? Like I personally would be terrified of having a ball coming at me at that speed. But if I'm committed to winning and scoring in the game, that's the only way. That's the only way. The other thing is, 
Strikes are part of the game. Some of you are playing games and you strike out and this is what you sound like. I'll never play again. I'll never do that again because, you know, I'm, I failed. And you just decide to go sit on the bench. How ridiculous is that? If you were talking to a professional baseball player, imagine Big Poppy. I'm from Boston. So if you're listening from anywhere in the world, that's the reference. You know, Big Poppy saying at some point, oh, I stroke out. I, I'm, I think I'm retiring. I'll never play again. That's unheard of. It's ridiculous. So you got to get that strikes are part of the game. If you strike, you go back and you hit the ball again. And at some point, you may get a home run or even a grand slam. But the only way that you can get to that point is you got to be willing to step into the field. You got to be willing to play. You got to be willing to face the ball and stay committed to the game. Yes. I have a kind of a good example. It happened in my life. I was a bowler and I was really big into bowling and I got pretty good at it. And um, I used to be the anchor man of a lot of different teams. Okay. And I was always worried, supposing it comes down to the last frame, I'm the last guy up. I either I do it and we win or I fail and we lose. Okay. And I'd get it in my head, I'd be afraid to fail, mm -hmm. okay? One of my fellow bowlers was so, he took me aside one day and he said these words, and I always remember it. He said, you can never be the hero if you're not willing to be the goat, mm. okay? If you're willing to take the shot, you may win, but you may lose, and you can't have the fear of losing. You know, you've got to go out and throw the best ball you possibly can and see what happens. Yeah, committed. You know, here's, here's the difference. You want, to, you want to play with a commitment to win, not with an attachment that you must win. And that's a huge distinction. And again, I want you guys to think about wh wherever you are. If you find yourself stuck, ask yourself, am I in the field playing or am I on the bench? Am I willing to strike out? And if you do, if you have, if you've tried something and you've, you know, you struck out, stroke out before, are you willing to get back in the game? Because again, that is the only way you can win the game of baseball if you're sitting on the bench you are playing a winless game and i would argue that there's many of you who are giving powers to some narrative stories and conversations that are designed to keep you on the bench and you're convinced you're actually playing but you're playing a winless game it is not going to happen so Wherever you are, that's one of the things that I'm inviting, you know, you is to to think about where you are, to think about, you know, what's that, oh, my God, for you? And then ask yourself, how can I reframe that? How can I reframe that in a way that empowers me? And again, going back to the video, you know, that I share with you guys about feeling stress myself and having that moment. You know, the, the, how I got my power back was by simply getting clear that I am committed to winning my game. And, you know, in, in my game includes, you know, the game that Stephen and I are playing. I'm committed and I am unwilling to let a strike take me off the game. Just not com not I'm unwilling it's not going to happen and I'm going to do whatever it takes to reframe that story um so that I can regain my own power no I'm going to do that after the show but um I've been given again sign language so if if I seem somewhat discombobulated it's because 
I'm learning sign language from both. You, you know, thought he was giving you the peace sign? I don't know. Or or, or the finger. I, at some point, <laughs> I saw a finger flying out there, and I have no idea what, what that meant. But um, a couple of things. I do want to remind everyone on September 9th, uh, I am participating in a in a um, in a conference uh, that is being it's a virtual conference that is being led by a group of international global coaches and leaders, and uh, the conference is titled uh, Conversations. I'm sorry. Okay, sign language again. Um, One minute remaining. Oh, thank you. And I t- completely forgot my train of thought. But go to my social media uh, um, so that you could. Uh, this is a conference. It's a virtual conference that's open to anyone who's interested in changing or shifting the kinds of conversations that you want to have that are going to empower you. Uh, Changing Conversations for a Changing World, by the way. That's the, the, the name of the conference. And uh, you can find me on at Coach Elix, at, you know, whether it's Instagram, LinkedIn, or Facebook. And how about you, Mr. Stephen the Medium? Stephen the Medium. That's it. That's it. That's it. Excellent. Anything else that we are missing? Do, do I... Okay, so again, thank you everyone for joining Great me show. today. I appreciate your calls. I appreciate your time, your attention, and I cannot wait for next week. But for Yay. now, get a grip, get in action, and talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.